welcome to Stingray Tom's Florida and day six of the Florida Adventure Series. Let's see what the object is for today. Well, it's small, sharp, and toothed. It's white and about three inches long. I'm pretty sure it's a Stingray Barb, or my name isn't Stingray Tom. As you probably know, this is from a Stingray. Rays and their cousins, sharks, are in a class of fish called chondrichthys, which means fish with cartilage, that have skeletons composed of cartilage, the same material that makes up the structure in your ears and nose. It's a resilient and smooth type of connective tissue, semi-transparent and non-porous, and is usually covered by a tough membrane. Rays and sharks don't have solid bones like most fish and all birds, reptiles, and mammals but they do have hard structures that are made out of modified fish scales known as placoid scales. They're similar in composition to teeth with a blood supplied pulp cavity and an exterior layer of dentine. And unlike cartilage, the scales don't break down much over time. The barb and the teeth of rays are made up of these scales. There's about 220 stingray species in the world and most are commonly found in coastal, tropical, and subtropical marine waters throughout the world. Stingrays are only part of the entire ray family, most of which don't have stingers or venomous barbs. For example, if you live in the deep ocean, having a defensive weapon at the base of your spine isn't very useful. So not all rays are stingrays, but oddly enough, not all stingrays are called stingrays. Regardless, stingrays are very common in Florida waters, especially two species, the southern stingray and the cow nose ray. Those are the main types that Florida aquariums have in their stingray touch pools. Southern stingrays are a type of whip ray, so named because of the long whip-like tail. Cow nose and southern stingrays are from different families, but they have similar barbs. The barb on both is serrated, covered in a venomous mucus, and is used for self-defense. The venom is composed of venomous secretions and mucus. The spine is covered with a layer of skin, and during secretion, the venom penetrates the skin and mixes with the mucus to release the venom on its victim. Stingrays store the venom within tissue cells before its release. Since stingrays are small and eat mollusks and a small fish, they're not aggressive and ordinarily attack humans only when provoked, such as when they're stepped on. They can have up to three barbs and contact with them will cause localized pain, swelling, muscle cramps, and tissue breakdown. While the injury is very painful, it's very unlikely to be fatal. Surgery may be required to remove the part of the barb that sometimes breaks off in the wound. As for the death of Steve Irwin in 2006, he had grabbed the stingray, holding it to his chest. This allowed the barb to penetrate his chest and pierce his heart, causing massive trauma and bleeding. It appears that it was partly the venom, partly the wound, and partly the distance from medical treatment that caused his death, though it wouldn't have happened if he hadn't pulled the stingray out of the water and held it to his chest. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for tomorrow's episode of Florida's Adventure Series 2023.